Time having arrived for 6.30 on Tuesday, June 10th. We're in the uh, budget hearing. Uh, Council Cruz. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, due to the fact that we had a special meeting tonight, the city clerk is here. I'd make a motion to take city clerk and city council Second. budgets tonight out of order. Motion made, properly seconded to take agenda items number one and two, city clerk, city council, which is scheduled for tomorrow night. Uh, Mr. Zioli's here. Uh, all in favor of that, raise your hand, please. All opposed, motion carries. Good evening, Mr. Clerk. Good evening, Councilor. Do you have a statement for us, sir, or no? Know that the budget is a level funded budget other than any of those increases due to the contractual agreements. Any questions for the clerk? Seeing none, we're going to move on to agenda item number two relative to city council. Any questions for the clerk? This is the only thank you for all you do for us. Thank, thank you. you. Good thank evening, you. <laughs> 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 Sit down, young man. <laughs> <laughs> Madam Clerk, we're going to go to uh, the agenda item for tonight, number one, which is Planning Board. Planning Board, May Wayne McAllister, Chairman. <clears throat> Good evening, Council. Good evening, Mr. Gurley. McAllister is ill. Thank you for being here tonight, Mrs. Gurley. Any statement? No. Any questions for Mrs. Gurley relative to planning? No. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. President, if I may. Council. Um, I see that police, police Chief Hayden is here, and uh, there was a request if they could go tonight instead of tomorrow, and I was wondering if I could make a motion to have number five from tomorrow skip to today. Second. Second. Yes, Council. I told the, told the mayor earlier today that I would definitely do that. Oh, yes. okay. Yes. Was there a motion to take it out of order now? Yes. I second it. Motion made properly second to take the police department, which was scheduled tomorrow night. Chief Hayden is here. All in favor of taking it out of order. All opposed. Motion carries. Good evening, Chief. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for taking me out of order. I have a family uh, commitment to make in Tennessee tomorrow. If anybody wants me to meet anybody and talk to them in Memphis, I'll be there tomorrow night. <laughs> Uh, opening statement, all contractual costs are funded, all positions are funded, except for a vacant uh, uh, seven positions in the police department that will be filled in January while we're waiting for an academy. Questions for the chief, Chief Hayden, questions for the chief relative to his department, the police department. Any councils have a question? Council Stewart, President. you have a question. Yeah, Council Stewart, you. you have the floor. Uh, Thank you. Chief Hayden, two questions for you. So what is the long-term plan of, about having both a sergeant and a captain at the high school, which seems like a very expensive lieutenant and a captain at the, at the high school, which seems ex extraordinarily expensive? There will be only a lieutenant, Lieutenant Mills, who's doing a fine job, will be manning the uh, school police. Right. I've already had a discussion with Captain Gomes about a new assignment. Okay, so he'll be coming back to, obviously, then the, the main building uh, he'll be coming back to an assignment that gives him uh, responsibility for policing and making people safe in all the parks and playgrounds in the city. Great, thank you. And then secondly, I had asked uh, your team to come back to us at some point in the near future around the, the levels of, I guess you can call it the top brass, but the, the cost of lieutenants and captains in our police department as a percentage of the entire force and how that looks compared to other departments? I'm sorry, I don't understand that question. If that's a budget question, I'm going to refer it uh, to Captain Williamson. Okay, it's a budget question, I guess. I am uh, Steve Williamson, I'm a captain of the police department. Thank you for being here, Captain. And uh, I do most of the uh, numbers, procurement budget for the police department. And I'm sorry, I heard your question, could you just repeat it? Sure. Um, so there's, I guess my question is, I want to know if the police department is top heavy when it comes to um, the top brass and what those numbers look like, what the numbers should look like compared to the rank and file police officers. And, what's that, and what is that costing us? Um, I don't have the breakdown with me. Um, I submitted the original budget back in February. Since then, we've been working on the changes with the new contracts. I do have a spreadsheet that I could email to you that has it broken down per employee. 
and by rank. Um, I, I didn't bring that with, with me today. So uh, we have the total numbers here, but not broken down by rank. Um, yeah, is there a way for you guys to, so with your spreadsheet, break it down by rank? Could, it, could you have it's it do a, that? It's, it's a detailed spreadsheet of every employee and what they make. Could I ask you to revise it so that it's broken down by rank for me? Uh, it, 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 there are subtotals on there. You'll be able to see what each rank makes. Council Stewart, I believe it is in there. It's in here. Not broken down by, yes, it is. Yeah, by rank or, so, so the top brass is sergeants, captains, uh, the top, the top is the chief, and then there's uh, six captains, 13 lieutenants, and 20 sergeants. I, I think those numbers are accurate. Yeah, they're right there. I didn't see it broken down by rank, so let me. And then, do we know if whatever these numbers are, are they? Are they comparable to other cities? I mean, are they comparable to the size of the? The, the officers on the, on the beat, I guess, to the number of top brass that we have at the police department. That's really my question. Uh, I, I'm not sure. Uh, are you saying that the, 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 the? Are you asking me if the brass make as much as the patrol overall? No. Or? no. I'm asking. So we have a budget that I, I guess you can break it down by the two unions, correct? So my question is: Does Brockton have um, an excessive amount of, are we putting an excessive amount of money into the, t into the pavement of the top brass compared uh, I guess, to other cities? Do I, we I, I guess that's a matter of, of opinion. I, in my opinion, no. I, I think I've seen numbers from other bra uh, departments. I don't know if they're accurate, but it seems like we have less brass in, in total number of brass officers than other departments of the same size. I see. Uh, in, in compared to fire departments, also, I haven't studied it, so I don't know how accurate it is. But I guess I don't have an accurate answer for you on that. Is that something you guys can kind of? Okay, I would appreciate it because I'm. That's a question that I have, and it's hard to. For me, I tried to do some research on this. It's difficult to go to other cities and know exactly the numbers of these individuals. By um, by occupation, I guess it's hard to figure out exactly how many how many officers and what ranks they have in other cities. Yeah, I've seen it posted. I just don't know who. We've had them on our wall at the police station from other departments. I don't know who's posted them. I don't know how accurate they are. I, right. I've never researched it. Uh, it's kind of hard to get a hold of some other departments' contracts to see what ex what they are making. Okay. Well, so again, Thank you. As I discussed last night, we could do a resolve to have him come in. I think it's important what you're talking about. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Councilor Bonds. Uh, hello, uh, Captain Williamson. Yes. Just a question on in the spreadsheet that was actually included on page four at the end of, I guess, all of the patrolmen list. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I believe, new recruit. Um, sections here that are funded are those to replace retirees or people yes leaving or? those are those are positions that were already funded uh, we are calling for a list to hire those seven officers uh, seven new recruits okay. hopefully by January okay. and are the, uh, the that's names to replace yeah. departed personnel okay so the names that are here are the ones that are leaving they're not the identified new people right those those are the th those are the names of the positions that we're filling. Those are the officers that held those positions. Okay, great. Thank you, sir. Council Bonds, you good? I'm all set. Thank you. Councils, any other? Council Cruz. Thank you. Thank you, Captain Weaver. A couple of questions. Um, I see uh, money in here up to about 196000 for vehicle repair. Yes. But no money for any purchasing. Um, how bad are we right now? In, I mean, are we going to make it through repairing cars? Or? Uh, well, we, we could use new cars every year. We, the miles add up. Um, it's, I've only been involved with this budget a couple of years, and it's not something that, it's something that we usually came to uh, separately I mean, I see to that, ask for. You know, we're asking for more money. I just, you know, um, when, does it become, uh, when does it become smarter to be purchasing instead of... Uh, I would repairing. like to see us purchase 
uh, set a certain number of new vehicles every year. Not replace the whole fleet, obviously. Obviously, we couldn't, right. If you replace a certain number every year, you can't keep it the same age. How many are we running, not, and I don't mean every specialty vehicle, but how many cruisers <coughs> are we running right now? I, I don't have that number. I, I don't know. And then my other question has actually to do with the seven recruits that are filling. Are we down seven right now? Because I see zero dollars for separate. <coughs> Excuse me, separation costs. So I assume nobody's retiring this year? Well, the, the separation cost is, is difficult to calculate because right now I don't know of anybody that's scheduled to retire in the next year. So it's kind of hard to, you know, you can't calculate it if you don't know. Well, we usually carry separation costs. Generally, we usually kind of know who some of those guys are in the past. And I know you're not, I mean, you're handling the numbers, but you're not making those decisions, but maybe, Jay, you could correct me if I'm wrong, but we usually, I mean, if we had somebody retire, we're going to need separation costs added in, correct? Yes, but it would be an unanticipated wrong years when people were given notice. Yeah, so nobody's given notice. Nobody's given point. notice. Last year, there might have been uh, an amount in there for Lieutenant, uh, I'm sorry, Sergeant Kendrick. He, he gave his, his uh, notice. So uh, well, last year we had 155, so 155,000, so, I mean, it's... A lot of money to be coming back for if we get, but nobody's put in that they're retiring. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. You. Chairman. Councils, anybody other, have any questions for the police department? None? We'll move on then. Thank you very much, Captain. Thank, thank you, you, Chief. Safe travels to Tennessee. Thank you. Madam Clerk, we're going to go on to uh, number two, please. Retirement contributory, William Farmer, Chairman. Farmer, good evening. Hi, um, I'm Hal. You're the first one here tonight. Thank you for yes. being here. <laughs> I wanted to get it over with. <laughs> uh, um, I'm uh, Hal Hanner. I'm the executive director right. of the retirement system. Bill uh, Farmer could not make it tonight. You, each of you should have a copy of the letter that we receive from PERAC, which is our regulatory authority, which requires a certain amount be uh, funded. Uh, You'll see the city uh, has an $18 million share of the almost $19 million annual cost for 2015. And uh, that's it's rather routine. Absolutely. Any questions for Mr. Hanna? Seeing none, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Madam Clerk, number three, please. Weights and measures, Mark Coyne, sailor. Mr. Coyne, good evening. Good evening. How are you tonight? Very good. Thank Thanks you. for joining us. Thank you. Thank you statement. for inviting me. <laughs> Any statement or? Uh, no, we're level funded this year, and we appreciate that, and things are going well in Weights and Measures, and um, I'll take any questions anybody cool. might have. Thank you, sir. Any questions for Mr. Coyne? Seeing none, thank you. Thank have you. A good evening. Thank you. We are going to hold on uh, Conservation Commission, Councilors. Ms. Danielson uh, may be running late, uh, so I'm going to ask that we push that. I'd like to get in the form of a motion, Councilor Ianieri. Move to hold. Second. There's a second. Motion made properly seconded. We're going to take number four at the end of the agenda, which is conservation. Stephanie Danielson, chair. We're going to go on to uh, Parks Commission, please. Park Commission, Timothy Carpenter, superintendent. Mr. Carpenter, good evening. Good evening, counselors. Uh, do you have a, uh, a statement for us? I'll try and keep it briefer than I did uh, last <laughs> year. Um, but I would like to take this time to publicly thank uh, the staff of the Parks Department for their hard work and dedication to the city, the park system, and the golf course. I'd also like to take this time to thank the members of the Park Commission for their dedication and willingness to serve the city. Uh, it has been a busy and productive year for the Park Department. We've been able to complete uh, the state-mandated upgrades to 30-acre pond dam, making it a safer structure and reducing the need for frequent and, to be honest, expensive inspections. Working closely with the BRA, the planning department, we received the park grant and made significant improvements to James Edgar Playground, a project that is now nearing completion. We've moved forward with making City Hall Plaza a park, and as everyone who tried to park tonight is well aware, um, we've obviously broken ground on that and look forward to restoring the plaza um, surrounding this beautiful historic building to an open greener space with increased accessibility. Uh, we do have some exciting future projects, hopefully, as well. Um, we've continued to open up areas around the ponds at DW Field Park, creating beautiful views, bringing the park closer to its original design. Through capital equipment purchases last fiscal year, we've been able to better, better maintain ball fields throughout the city, making them safer and more user-friendly. 
And we've made some infrastructure improvements at Tukas Park, Keith Playground, Buckley's Playground, and the Manning Pool. We've also started a memorial bench program to replace benches in DW Fields Park and on the golf course. We've also made a renewed effort to invest in DW Field Golf Course. We've been able to hire a new general foreman, filling a position that was unfunded and vacant for over a year. We've worked hard to make significant improvements to not only the agronomics, but the efficiencies of running the golf course. In the past three years, we've made improvements to the infrastructure of the golf course, and the results are now showing. The course is improving quickly. From the health of the greens to the overseeding of tees and some of the fairways, conditions at DW Field Golf Course are improving. We have continued to partner with 98.5 The Sports Hub to help in advertising. And this year, we've also partnered with Golf Now, not only gaining access to hundreds and thousands of golfers through their advertising websites, but also allowing the public to book online from home or their mobile devices. To date, we have had 624 online bookings, many of whom are new to DW Field Golf Course, and we hope that they'll become repeat customers. <coughs> We are close to launching a website dedicated specifically to the golf course, allowing the golfing public to view the course, book tee times online, as well as provide information on upcoming events and specials through email blasts. We've made upgrades to the lunchroom through the purchasing of equipment. Mr. Soy is once again running the lunchroom, and just last week we were able to serve our beer and wine for the first time, and if you're like me, after a round of golf, you need a cold beer when you're adding up your scorecard. <laughs> Um, we hope that all these um, improvements at the golf course um, will lead to more tournaments. Um, we are also investing in the game itself, um, and more importantly, the game here in the city. We will be offering a free junior golf clinic every Tuesday during the months of July and August, uh, as well as <coughs> spearheading the Brockton Junior Open again this year and offering some late day tea times for Brockton After Dark. Thank you for allowing me the time to speak to you this evening, and I will now do my best to answer any questions you may have. Mr. Coppin, what are the ages for that clinic? It'll be anyone up to the age of 17. Thank you. Council Dubois. Um, hi, Mr. Carpenter, thanks for Evening. coming. Um, can you just give us an update on Mulberry Street, the Mulberry Street playground that may be um, installed? Well, we're moving forward with the engineering plans now. Um, and hope to have the project completed by uh, as early as possibly this December. This December? Correct. So you're going to be breaking ground so the grant was approved? Yes, ma'am. How much did you get? It's um, $145,000. And what do you plan on putting at the Mulberry Playground? We'd like to put a basketball court over there um, and some larger, more modern play equipment, obviously with the new rubber safety base underneath it. Um, the, more kids we can get out, the more kids we can get outside, the better off we'll all be. Oh, sure. Any plans for lighting? Uh, not at this time, no. Okay. Um, and what are you going to do with the $700,000 subsidy from the general fund? What was the determination that uh, required that? Our revenues at the golf course were down a little bit last year. Um, and so that's where um, that additional funding becomes required. So it's going toward the golf course? It's going towards the entire parks department. Okay. So um, what was the revenue of the golf course last year? It was 200, just shy of uh, $650,000, I'm sorry. And how much does it cost to operate a year? Uh, last year, we ran about $590,000. And um, a lot of that cost was we had to um, hire someone to come in and spray our greens um, because we didn't have anyone in position with the proper licenses. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Carpenter relative to this agenda item? Council Rodriguez. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Carpenter, how are you? Fine, thank you. Uh, I was just wondering if there are any, um, I mean, I hear citizens kind of on a daily basis that you drive around and people saying how beautiful DW Fields Park is. But are there any plans? I know that during the uh, Harrington administration, we had talked about doing some paddle boats and some other things at the at DW in the sense to, one, to beautify the park somewhat, two, to generate some summer jobs for some of the kids in our community. 
But three, also to generate some additional income to the city. Are there any plans or have you and the park commissioners talked about, you know, doing anything to DW? Because to be honest with you, I mean, you've got a beautiful facility there, but for some odd reason, it's, it's the backyard of a few people and it's a place where you go jogging around and stuff. And I think we could do really probably a little bit more with DW, especially during the summer months. Um, we have had some brief sort of discussions. Um, you know, like I say, during the winter time, we do concentrate on clearing away all the underbrush from around the ponds, um, really trying to um, open up the park. Um, you know, we're hoping to have all of our safety markings repainted again um, this year. Um, we do have some new signs to let, we'd like to get up in regards to the rules. In terms of um, paddle boats and whatnot, um, I think there are some issues with how exactly the park is to be utilized under the will. And um, obviously there are some, some safety issues when it comes to having boats out in the pond. Well, uh, you know, I've seen some old photographs, not that I was around back then, although I, sometimes I feel like I was around back then, but I've seen some old, old photographs of the, the lower portion of the, uh, the, of the park, in the sense, mm -hmm. being used as a beach. Correct, like you know, uh, where Ellis folks... Brett Pond used to be absolutely a swimming hole. Um, with the siltation that's taken place over the years, um, on, Fortunately, unfortunately, Ellis Brett Pond has now essentially been filled in and is, to this point, just about a stream. Um, you know, there are some major safety concerns, I think, with um, utilizing the water features within the park um, the way uh, you might be suggesting. But I, I think that's a conversation that you, you, you and your commissioners uh, should definitely have because, mm -hmm. I mean, we... Uh, on, on the summer months and stuff, uh, I know that a ton of folks from this community travel onto Hogan's Pond up on, in, in Milton and stuff like that. I think it would make uh, a great deal of sense to have that kind of discussion because what it does, it subsidizes uh, your revenue in a sense. You know, we're here pinching for a dollar here and there, and if we can kind of come up with, a, with some sort of a funding source to kind of subsidize the park, I think it would be, uh, it would be fruitful, especially in lieu of all the issues that we have with the kids in the community and not having, you know, some things to do during the summer months. Absolutely. But, but thank you and uh, keep up the good work. Uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Council, any other questions relative to this agenda item? Mr. Council Chairman. Cruz. Thank you. Uh, just a quick comment. I uh, received many phone calls, well, quite a few <laughs> phone calls last week or 10 days uh, from the golfers up at the golf course. And usually when you get those as a counselor, they're not good calls. But they're very happy with the new one. I don't even know the title of the new uh, He's a groundskeeper. He's a general foreman. General foreman up there. They're very happy with him, and I know it's only been, I guess, two weeks. Or... Uh, he started the Tuesday after Memorial Day, so we're on our third week now. Yeah, but uh, I can tell you that the phone calls are all favorable, which the way the phone call, all of us councilors can tell you the phone calls we've had for the last few weeks, we don't had, haven't had a lot of favorable <laughs> this time of year, so just want to thank you and the I'm committee. I'm glad I could help out. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Councilors, councilors, any other questions? Mr. Chairman. Council Rodriguez, follow-up? Yeah, I just wanted to follow up on something that I noticed on the, uh, on the budget here. You seem to have a, a pretty large number um, of an item for overtime. Can you uh, explain that a little bit to us? Because it seems that, you know, based on your full-time numbers, you're looking at $560,000 and there's $144,000 in, um, in overtime, so. Correct. Um, well, obviously the golf course is open seven days a week and there are maintenance issues that need to be taken care of seven days a week. Uh, we have over 1,200 acres of parkland in the city, um, a majority of which is maintained. And all of that require, I mean, it's, it's maintained area. It requires a lot of time to, uh, to try and get around. I spend, I would say conservatively, anywhere between 65 and 80 man hours a week just picking up garbage. Um, and now you add mowing of all the grass, grooming of the infields, lining of the fields. Um, it's, it's quite a task to undertake. And um, oftentimes Saturdays are an extra hours in the afternoon are the only way we're going to be able to keep up with any of it. 
I had this discussion with Mr. Conda not too long ago in terms of um, overtime versus hiring new bodies to do things, but in some instances, wouldn't it make more sense just to maybe hire a couple more bodies to, um, to be part of, uh, of the regular crew? Well, we have been, uh, we have fortunately had um, one individual that we've called back from layoff this past um, April, um, which is, a, a, you know, one extra hand, you're absolutely right, does make a huge difference. Um, but it's still now a staff of five. Um, and as I said, it is, it is exceedingly difficult to keep up with everything that we need to keep up with in a 40 hour week. You know, the extra hands, I would always absolutely take them. Um, but, but why wouldn't you take some of that overtime money and <clears throat> convert I think part that of that has to go with the extending costs to a new employee. Uh, you know, you're then talking about the dental insurance, the health insurance, <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, you know the retirement. Um, so there are those additional costs. It's not just the hourly um, salary that that one individual um, would take. Are there any? Um, I know that you talked about a, little, a couple grants and stuff like that. But are, are there any thoughts or plans of working with? Because um, uh, I know the um, the cultural council, for instance, the Massachusetts cultural council has some funding. <laughs> available for you know to fund some projects in parks and things like that i mean have been any thoughts of going after some of those funds to uh augment i, I am yeah. always seeking what i would call free money um always um and please by all means any counselor that has any insight onto any upcoming grants please feel free to to send them along to me No, but I, I understand that, but I was actually talking about the parks, Mr. Mayor. You asked about Mass Cultural Council. Yeah, yeah, but I'm, you know, because they do have, uh, and I know that for a fact, that they actually do fund, you know, outdoor amphitheaters and that kind of stuff, and we are in dire needs of areas for young people to go out and show what they can do uh, beyond just the, I mean, the, we've got great, a great high school with great plays, but we don't have much in terms of outdoor stuff in the city, so... There are funds out there available that you can actually go far, you know, after and stuff like that. And if, uh, again, I'll be uh, getting in touch with you to see if I can kind of. Well, Absolutely, can I would appreciate off. it. Thank Great you, Mr. Deal, Chancellor. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Isaac. Good evening, Mr. Carpenter. Good evening. Um, I have a question actually that may be uh, related to what uh, Councilor Rodriguez is asking. I, I happened to be at a meeting with you at the uh, Water Commission, and you had asked for, do we have a, didn't you get a grant for water? I don't want to call it a water park, but it was like to get wa like water sprouting. Um, one of the features at James Edgar Playground is, in fact, what we've called a splash pad. Okay, um, splash so pad. It's, so it's part of um, it's Edgar Park. It's already installed over at Edgar's. It's user operated. You can go up, press the plunger, the jets come on for a minute, automatically shut off, and uh, so that'll be open and available to the public uh, the 18th. Oh, great, thank you. Council Bonds. Oh, sorry, Councilor Isaac, are you? Yes, thank you. Council Bonds. Uh, yes, Mr. Carpenter. Just looking on here about the pools, um, that amount of money, the 143,798, that encompasses maintenance and operation of all the pools in the city, correct? Correct. Okay, now does that also cover the staff, lifeguards, and? Um, the revenue generated from the Manning pool covers part of the cost of the lifeguards. The lifeguards at the Cosgrove pool mm -hmm. um, come from the YMCA, who I believe gets their funding from CDG, CDBGB money. Okay. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chairman. Council Stadensky. Point of historical information, Ellis yes, Pond. I'm not that old, I really never swam in it, but <laughs> prior to uh, the installation of the Westgate Mall, very, very good city swimming pool. Westgate Mall was put in, asphalt, water flows downhill, that's where it went, pollution. So we lost one pool there. Thank you. Just you happened to have read that somewhere. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Weren't you a lifeguard back then? <laughs> <laughs> any, other, any other questions? Constantine Neri, I have a question if you could take my spot. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That was good. I know, I know, I know that. 
<laughs> Mr. Carpenter, good evening. Good evening. Just had a question. Our, our former colleague, uh, Ward 7 Councilor Chris McMillan, uh, who was a, a great city councilor and he's being followed on by Councilor Isaac, uh, he came up with a notion and it was short money to actually have a splash pond, a splash, whatever you call it, pad, on the Oak Street side of, uh, of D-Dub. And it was short money. This was under the Harrington administration. And then we didn't hear boo. Has that been brought back to your attention at all? That honestly is the first time I've, I've heard of it. I mean, there was plans drawn. We had a guy come in from, from Canada. Um, I mean, you might just want to look into that because it was short money and actually, and this through the mayor as well, uh, the pipe actually came right to the spot that Chris had, had picked. So um, just food for thought. Okay, All absolutely. Right? Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Councilor. Chairman. Councilors, any other questions in regards to the, if not, we'll be moving on to um, cemeteries. Mr. Cemetery, Timothy Carpenter, Superintendent. Do you have a statement, Mr. Carpenter? Good evening. I do, of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, again, I would like to take this opportunity to publicly thank the staff at the Cemetery Department for their hard work and dedication to the city and the department over the past year. <clears throat> I would also like to thank um, all those involved in the Memorial Day preparations, including not only the Cemetery Department staff, but the Parks Department staff, staff from DPW Highway, the VA, Boston, Healthcare System, Compensated Work Therapy Program, and the Trial Court Services. I believe this coordinated effort provided a manicured and appropriate appearance for the 140 acres of all eight city-owned cemeteries. Just as an update from July, July 2013 to present, uh, there were 240 burials in city-owned cemeteries. We continue to make great strides in getting all records entered into a computer database with over 17,500 entered to date and some eight to 9,000 entered in the last year alone. We're working with the IT department to make these records available to citizens through the city website and have created sections within the existing cemetery website to assist in the scheduling as well as navigation of the Melrose Cemetery, which can be very confusing. To that end, we have also put up section markers along the main thoroughfares and the newer sections of the cemetery to help visitors find their way around the cemetery. We have successfully opened this new single section and hope to begin an expansion project for new two and three grave lots. We have reviewed and adjusted the fees within the department and have begun the process of finding new and innovative ways of using specific funds to upgrade and replace equipment. At this point, I hope to be able to answer any questions you may have. That's Ian Airy, first question. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, good evening, Mr. Carpenter. Good evening, sir. And uh, just comment, and then I do have a, a question, but I do want to commend you and your staff um, for the job that you've been doing at the Melrose, Melrose Cemetery for the, for the last two um, years, and uh, specifically this year, I noticed uh, quite a big difference um, in the cleanliness, um, preparation for Memorial Day. As you know, a few years back, we had a, uh, had a problem up there, and, and Memorial Day was just devastating to those that uh, went to visit the graves of um, you know, loved ones. And, uh, and, I, and I mean that. I, it makes a big, big difference. And um, I'm, I'm a cemetery goer because I made that commitment to my parents. When they left, I would take care of the ancestors' graves, and, and I'm up there a lot. And um, I don't know who will do it when I'm gone, but you know, in, in any case, um, I, I do mean that, it's been, uh, it, it looked good. The oldest section that was always in a disarray was, um, I have a great grandmother down there at that end, and I tell you, it was, um, it was nice to see that it was clean, I could see the marker. It, it means a lot, it really, really does. So uh, keep up the good work, because it, it's important, very, very important. Um, just my question, I know, I see under the cemetery expansion capital, I know you had put in a request, but I think the mayor left it somewhat open and didn't fund it. Does that mean at some point you may have to come back to us um, as that expansion plan comes in place? Or? Well, the, um, the money set aside for the expansion project we're working on now is in the fiscal year 14 budget. Okay. So um, with the singles expansion that we did last year, um, that should give us probably, I would say conservatively, another five to six years for singles. Okay. Um, when we complete the new twos and threes lots, hopefully that gets us, I would say, close to 10 to 12 years. Okay. And um, just going back to, to the cleanliness part, I know when, um, I think it was last year, we had you before us because some other people had raised an, an issue in regards to some of those single graves and, and you were having uh, difficulty in, in um, trying to do your cleaning around there because of... Um, you know, different situations, different nationalities mourn differently and what they bring in place before 
a headstone or even on a, on a, on a grave. And has that changed so much? I'm, I mean, it, it, have you got a little easier control on taking care of that area? Um, I'll have a sort of a two-phase answer to this. One, yes, it has gotten somewhat easier. We've been much more proactive about sending out letters to lot owners saying, you either need to come and pick up your stuff or we're gonna take it down, we'll keep it for, I think we've set a limit of two weeks after that, we will dispose of it. Okay. Um, the second part of that answer is that in our new single section, we only allow flat markers. Um, Good. It's much easier to maintain, there's no string trimming, and the, um, it's a little more difficult to, for the adornments um, around that single flat stone. Um, right. Right, you know, a little so, different than what you have yep. when you have a headstone. All right, great. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Dubois. So um, I have gotten a lot of compliments, but I've also gotten, uh, gotten a, a complaint from a constituent who goes up and visits her mother's grave um, probably once a week and has um, different decorations that she places on the grave for, uh, and what they are is that she'll get um, these... Uh, how can I, I describe it? They kind of like a lay, if you think about it. You know, so they're round and they fit right over the tombstone, and they lay on the granite. Um, so there's a granite base, and then the top of the granite pillar, and they literally lay on the granite base. So if you were to mow, you wouldn't come anywhere near it. So um, she does it for multiple holidays. And she had one up there, and I can't remember which holiday it was, but it was one of the holidays, and it had been there maybe four days. And she went up, and it had been taken and thrown away. So that disturbed her greatly. And I think she spoke with your department about asking you to pay and reimburse her about that. And I don't think that she really got much um, much uh, results from, from that inquiry. So I can understand the need to not allow a graveyard to look like um, you know, a trash heap. Um, but <coughs> if, if you are seeing this type of responsible homage to people's family members, I mean, just as this is a perfect example, if everything she said was correct, and I know this woman not to really, she's pretty meticulous in everything that she does, um, much more so than me, and um, so I believe what she's saying. So what are you doing with that? What's, what's your, what, what do you think about that situation? I know you don't know the whole picture unless you know this, the woman I'm speaking of. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I wouldn't, you know, without sending out letters, we don't remove anything. I mean, that's just our policy. Um, you know, sometimes when we're mowing, do things get tangled up or when we're weeding, <clears throat> absolutely, accidents happen. Sure. Um, you know, and we're pretty good about about letting people know about that. And to be honest with you, because I have staff there until let's say 2.33 o'clock, and I would say a majority of people visit after those hours, mm -hmm. I can't control who's in the cemetery 24 hours a day. Sure. And the gates have to be maintained mm -hmm. in an op you know, open so that people can drive in to visit their loved ones. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I so you haven't had that many complaints about that, that you, that you remember? Or have you been getting a lot of complaints about anything like that? This year, I haven't really had That's great. any complaints, to be honest with you. All right. Well, thank you very much. No, you're doing a really good job. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. you, Councilor. Councilor Stewart. Thank you, Mr. Carpenter. A question about the overall budget. So if I look at the numbers before <clears throat> you arrived, it looks like we increased your budget by maybe $60,000 a year or something like that. And now, based on this year's budget and what you had previously, it's dropped dramatically. So my question is, um, with the improvements that you've made, they've been very noticeable and it's very much appreciated. And I, I think the folks who came here last year and had those major concerns uh, appreciate your work as well. Um, how do you manage through that change of a, a budget that looks to be far less than it was before you arrived? Well, again, Council, I think that that large change that you're seeing at the at the bottom line there right. is that $150,000 that was a transfer from the sale of lots and graves last fiscal year for our upcoming expansion project. Okay. So right. if you take away that 150, 
we're just about the same funding level. Got it. Okay. And then, so what have you? So the fact that you've made such a remarkable difference um, in what we're seeing is then not necessarily due to additional monies, but due to better management. What, what's happening there that you've been able to pull this off so well? Um, I think it's probably a combination of both. I mean, I think you know we have obviously. Um, used some money from like additional accounts, uh, sales of lots and graves, for example, for our expansion projects. Um, we have had some staff turnover. Um, we've also done a lot to um, bring in um, the VA guys from the VA for their um, compensated work therapy program. So we have three guys from the VA that, you know, basically spend eight hours a day riding a lawnmower. Um, I think it is about day-to-day -day management and making sure that every minute of the working day is, is making progress towards the end goal. Great. And your opening statement, you mentioned you're looking for innovative ways to bring in additional revenue. Um, what are some examples of what you guys are looking into? Well, I think um, that's sort of something that we'll t probably talk about more about when it comes time for the revolving fund <laughs> accounts. Um, but we are looking to utilize some of the revolving funds in a, in a manner that I don't believe they've been utilized in the past. Mm -hmm. Okay, then specifically around signage at, at the cemeteries, we know we have a pretty diverse population today that's taking advantage of, of that space. Um, are you guys considering different kinds of signage with instructions to make certain that everyone understands what the sort of guidelines are for use yep. of the space? Um, so for just simply the um, areas in the cemetery, I mean, those are just letters. So, you know, um, but our next publication of the rules of the cemetery, essentially, will be published in more languages than just English. Do you know which languages you're selecting? We'll probably do English, Spanish, Portuguese, and... Haitian Creole mm -hmm. or French, okay. French. Uh, and then slightly off topic, but still relative to your role. I didn't, I didn't come in earlier, but I also appreciate what you've done with the park system. And, um, and I, as I've said, I think the mayor and I kind of agree on this greatly, that putting more money into the parks and playgrounds where kids and families can go is one of the better investments we can make to ensure that kids are safe because they'll go and figure out for themselves how to take care of themselves. You don't need special programs and overhead and staff to make that happen if we just provide a nice clean place for kids and families to go. And so um, I, I don't think, well, there's no department really that's funded at capacity, but I, I certainly believe this department is underfunded significantly based on the kind of return we could get if we just get our parks and playgrounds uh, in, a, in a place that families would want to go there. So I know you're making a lot of headway in that area. Uh, and in my understanding, there's, a, there's some work to be done at Pick Park as well, correct? Correct. Um, we're working uh, in conjunction with the school department to see if we can get uh, some more, continue the improvements that we had, we had made over the past couple of years. Great. Well, thank you, Mr. Carpenter. Thank you, Mr. President. Hey, Mr. Stewart. Constance, any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Carpenter. Thank you. Constance, just, uh, just again, uh, just to kind of remind you, let's stay on point. I've given some leeway, uh, but again, we, the whole basis of the, of the budget hearing is to talk about the budget, okay? And we could do resolves relative to FENCOM. We will be having a FENCOM again later this month. Um, with that, I did see uh, Mrs. Danielson here, so I'd like to take uh, Conservation Commission uh, now. Good evening. Good evening, thank you so much. Um, for allowing me to be here this evening. Um, I would like to thank all the counselors for another great year of support. The Conservation Commission has a pretty hard job and, and not always one that people truly appreciate. Um, but we've had a lot of projects come before the commission this year, several that have involved helping businesses <coughs> grow and advance, but do it in a way that protects the environment for the city well into the future. Um, I appreciate Councillor Stewart's comments about the parks and playgrounds and how important they are to the image of the city. Our open and green space and natural resources are also very important to that perception. Um, one of the achievements we also accomplished this year, working with the planning board and with the Brockton Redevelopment Authority was completing an update to our open space plan. 
And that is important because it allows the city to apply for certain state grants and receive them. Um, our budget remains as it has. It's um, level funded, I believe, from previous years. We do use an outside consultant to provide technical support to the commission. It also provides our staff support in the form of Pam Gurley. She is a great asset to the commission. I don't know how we do our work without her. Um, before I just open up to questions for the counselors, I would also like to thank the support of the mayor and the counselors in filling our open positions on the commission. We've been operating with a pretty lean board for a number of years. Some very dedicated individuals, um, they've really put a lot of effort into learning about what they are charged with regulating, and the new commissioners promise to be just as good. So again, thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Danielson. Any questions relative to the Conservation Commission? Just, 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 Mr. President, just a, a comment. I know we should stay on the budget, but I've seen you in action a number of times um, chair that committee and just have always been impressed by uh, your professionalism and smarts, and I think you're a great asset to, this, to the city, particularly for a board that is not often recognized. So thank you for your, your service and the, thank and the work Thank you very the much. It's, it's been a pleasure to serve. Thank you, Council Stewart. Uh, Council Bond. Yes, um, Ms. Danielson, you mentioned the upgrading of the open space uh, maps or, or the report. The open space and recreation plan. Plan, okay. And it, it opens us up for um, eligibility for state grants and some different kind of funding for different things. Have, has any of those um, been identified? Have any, any of that been identified yet for what grants you're gonna go for? It and was, I believe it was a park grant okay. for, I'm gonna ask Pam, it, was it that, the Edgar? For the Edgar Park that was applied for last year. Okay. And the open space plan, which had expired, needed to be updated before that um, the monies that the city expended could be reimbursed through that grant. Oh, okay. and, and that was completed, and it was quite an effort. There was an open space committee that was appointed, and it, it took um, a little over a year to finish that process. So the rewards are already, we're already seeing the that, rewards of all of the hard right. work of the that's commission. Right. Excellent. Thank you. You're welcome. Any further questions, Council? No, thank you. Thank you, Council. Council, any questions for Mrs. Danielson? Council Dubois. Uh, I think you're doing a great job, Mrs. Danielson, and the whole commission is, so thank you very much. Um, can you tell me, does it cost anything to transfer land into the Conservation Commission's um, purview of protection? Is that part of the, the budget costs? It, if someone wants to donate land to the city for permanent protection and open space, that land is transferred under the care and management of the Conservation Commission. A donation generally does not cost uh, the city or a municipality. Sometimes a municipality is willing to pay for um, an environmental set assessment to ensure the property is uh, safe or to do some kind of sur land survey. But if someone wants to donate, it doesn't cost anything. Um, you know, if the city wants to purchase land for permanent protection, then of course they would need to pay for that. Um, but you know, that would require some grants and probably some matching funds from the city to be able to do that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Council. Any other questions? Mrs. Danielson, thank you very much. Have a good thank evening. Thank you. Thank good you. Send item for uh, public property, please. Public property, James Kasiri, Superintendent. Mr. Superintendent, good evening. Hello, Councilors. How are you tonight? Um, I would just like to take a moment to thank all of my staff that works with me, and I say with me and not for me because we all work for you. Um, my staff down, the, not just the maintenance personnel down at public property, but all the staff here at City Hall because uh, we've had our share of cuts through our department and the work hasn't slowed down. It's gotten to be more and we are still somehow able to barely keep up. So I just want to commend them for their good job. And I'll take any questions. Thank you, Mr. Kassiri. Any questions for Mr. Kassiri? Councilor DiNapoli. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Kassiri, good evening and uh, thank you for coming. Uh, you and I have talked earlier this week and uh, a couple of things. First of all, we'll start out with, uh, uh, I believe that the school department has uh, made some cuts in their, uh, uh, the Daily Brothers. We're, we're in that position. Uh, they maintenance call, division? Not the maintenance of it. They did specialty work for the school department, take care of the buildings. 
craftsman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And uh, now that you are, do uh, uh, you take care of the buildings? Are you going to be assuming that responsibility? We have never given up that responsibility. We've just been supplemented by their staff, but I we still maintain the schools. So with, with, by, by those people, I think there was, what, three or four of them that were there? On the school side? Yes. I'm not sure. They have quite a few more than that. Two, okay, Two so, layoffs, so, Mayor, so, so you, you may have more work on your hands now. We, we, yeah, it never slows down. It only gets to be more. Absolutely. I, I know that you have a, uh, have a couple of pos positions in your budget that are, uh, but are vacant, but are, are uh, crucial. They're, they're, uh, crucial. That's the word I was looking for. Thank you. The other thing that uh, I, I came across that I, I believe is a, uh, uh, a problem with the city I was driving around and I called you over the weekend and we found uh, a couple of companies putting roofs on the Westgate Mall, the other one at a Tedeschi's on the east side and a home on River Street. And you know, it's really tough for me to, uh, to, 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 to file a complaint because I'm not an enforcement officer. How are we gonna handle this and how are we gonna fix this situation that there, these contractors are, they're roofers, and they know they're supposed to pull permits. Correct. Yep. And they get away with it. And it's not the problem that we're losing revenue, but it's it's a problem of safety if the roof is not installed right, if it can't handle uh, extra shingles on the roof. Um, well, in a commercial building especially, because it requires a lot more than just a roofer's license. I mean, you have to have... Uh, construction control, which would include an engineer or an architect be involved with the job, like the one up the mall. So um, we responded to all of those, and they've all come in to pull permits, and uh, I believe we're double feeing them as well, because that's the penalty for working without a permit. The other thing is, uh, you know, personally, I, I think we should uh, make the fee uh, a little higher than, you know, if these companies want to do business in, in Brockton, and uh, they're getting away with putting roofs on on the weekend because we don't have people out there. Is there, you know, you're supposed to uh, put in the window or on the building a building permit. And it's big and you can see it. It's supposed to be displayed. Displayed. Because yep. I, I know those nice red stickers that you put on the season work on them. I've seen those on the building. Correct. And they look very nice on Sunday afternoon when I went by the Tedeschi's. But uh, is, there, is there any way that... Uh, the police department can can help in, in, in maintaining this? Well, the building code is is not a punishing code. It's a more of a compliance code. We, we look for compliance with uh, the contractors. We don't want, and for instance, if they have the roof torn off, we certainly don't want to <coughs> inhibit them from finishing the project before it rains and there's more damage done. But um, we're looking for compliance with this code, and there's really no vehicle for extra fees unless such an ordinance was created, I suppose. Has the police department ever told anybody to? It, it's like people having yard sales. They have a yard sale, they're supposed to get a permit. Correct. And is, isn't there any help out there for us? Well, that would be, uh, I believe that goes through the clerk's office on, on that, on the permitting of yard sales. But we, we do go out and try to do our policing and, and I'm sure there's some we miss, but we're pretty diligent. I have three billing inspectors two wiring inspectors and two um, plumbing inspectors, and I, I send them out on the weekends occasionally to look for such things. I hate to tell you how many times I've called. I, I bet you I've called uh, 25 times people doing. And I have 11 counselors, so you can imagine. Well, maybe I'm <laughs> the only one out there with my phone and making phone calls, but I'm, I'm trying to help. I know you are, and I appreciate it. Okay. Yep, I do. L let me tell you, you, you're doing a great job. Your staff, every time I call, they're very, very pleasant especially April. She always gives me a hard time, but I love her. Yeah. And uh, I, I want to I thank her office for all the help that they have given me. In, in, in Personally, when I, when I took this job five years ago, I wasn't a certified building <clears throat> commissioner or even a certified building inspector. I do have, my entire background is in building, but I was a supervisor, a construction supervisor that ran the public property department. And when I was put in the position of asked to help out, if I didn't have April, I wouldn't have been able to do that job. Even to this day, I re rely on her experience on 
something will come up and I'll say, April, uh, what do you think of this one? And she'll go pull a file out in two minutes and she'll have the whole history on it. And she has it all up here too, well, so she, we, extremely helpful. When you're out, when you're on vacation, when she I runs call, the show. She says, I'm in charge. Yeah, and she yeah. is. A a absolutely. <laughs> yeah. well, th thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Council Bonds. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Kassiri. On uh, the purchase of service sheet. What are we looking at? Uh, the Personal services? The purchase of service. Purchase of service. Like electricity, energy, all of okay. those things. Yeah. Um, not salaries stuff. Right. But in particularly energy and electricity. Yeah. And I'm just kind of looking at the increase um, in both of those line items, and then they were level for the last couple of years. Right. Are these anticipated to change with some of the, the innovations that, that are coming with the new lights and some of the new lights that have been put in to save energy when uh, National Grid and some of those energy folks came with the light um, presentation? Right. Is We're always looking for, for those innovations, but we always have to have that part of the budget funded because we case. don't want to run out of that portion of the budget because we had an extremely hot summer and had to run the AC all summer and okay. then piled on with an extremely cold winter and all of a sudden we're into March and we're running out of money. Okay, okay. So you I never understand. real, that's a hard one to predict, Councillor. Okay, I understand that. Um, thank you. And then I'm just looking at some of the staff. There are several vacant um, positions that are funded. Are you? There's three. One, two. There's a, um, a boiler technician. Right now, I don't have any. He retired, and I like to have two at every position for coverage, but we have boilers and, and heating units and in every single building in the city, and right now that position is, is open and funded, so totally necessary. Well, there's a carpenter and a in clerk. The, in the carpenter's position, I only, I'm down to one carpenter now because of prom a promotion. One of my carpenters was promoted, so now I have the need for two carpenters because the one I have has five vacation weeks a year and the emergencies don't stop on those weeks when uh, he's off. So. Okay. All right. So you're, you're pl you are planning to hire and put out and... I'm planning on hiring all three of those. Folks come in. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Stoughton. Uh, thank you, Mr. Kassiri. How are you? Hi, Councilor. How are you? I'm doing well. Just a question around uh, the innovations that I guess the mayor's office is putting in place in IT, putting a lot of the services online. Uh, I'm assuming that impacts your department greatly with all the different permits, and, and so can you talk more about how that impacts your, your budget and frees up staff time if it, if it does? What are you projecting? I'm not sure where that's going to go. I'm, I'm hoping it frees up staff and makes more time available. At the inception of it, it's, it's going to be, you know, the maiden voyage, and, and when we're on a maiden voyage, you have the shakedown crew, so I'm sure that the first year it's, it's going to be getting people up to speed and figuring it out, but I'm hoping, and that's the intention of IT is always to make the workload less, so I think that that will work out that way. And does that mean, I, I just, I'm imagining that your department is the one most impacted by the new online services, because you guys deal a lot with, you know, permitting and stuff like that. Um, and I could be incorrect in my assumption, I'm just making that assumption. Um, so are you, as a team, thinking ahead in a couple of years how that will impact your budget or staffing and what you're able to do in the future that you can't do now because you have additional talent that's available? Or I'll, I'll know better how to project once we have it in place and see how it's up and running. Okay. So next year I would think we'd have a great idea of where we're going with that. Great, great. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, thank you. Councilor Dubois. Thank you. Hi, Mr. Kassiri. Hello, Councilor. I think you and your team do a really good job, so thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank you. Um, the only critique I'd like to make is when you're doing these hirings, can we get some gen gender parity in your department? Because it just seems across the board you have female clerks making like $30,000 and male, um, what are they called, journeymen or, you know. Licensed uh, tradesmen that have licensed spent Licensed tradesmen their that life. are making, um, you know, $60,000. And I know women do this work. And it just, it seems like there is, um, there are gender roles going on. And, you know, my ears ping when I come in City Hall and every other person calls a 50-year-old woman a girl and pays them $30,000 a year for something that they do that in, private sector, they'd be making $50,000 a year. So it isn't just your department, but it's just where you have three open positions. 
Um, are you, do you have any plans to try and fill these positions with qualified women and get some of your women, some women in that department making, you know, a better salary? You know, it's funny when you talk about statistics like that, you know, like you could look at a fire department and say, you know, there's inequality here because there's not as many women as men, but how many women want to be firefighters? I mean, that number probably reflects are, yeah. the amount that We're are. We're talking about your department, and there so are plenty of women who many, are carpenters. And if, if the person who applies for that carpenter's job is a woman and she's the most qualified carpenter, she would be welcome with open right. arms, Councilor. I just think, I find a real problem with this budget um, and in the makeup of your department. So I'm just hoping that you'll take my um, advice and try to bring some gender parity to your department because right now there's really none. I can't actively seek. A, a, I think, I think the, uh, the superintendent, I think the superintendent said he, he hires the most qualified. Yeah. Regardless of male or female. Yes, yeah, that's what I've never says. had one apply. He answered the question. Yeah. Thank you. Thank never. You. But if one does, then it, as I said, if she's the most qualified person, please, I welcome her with open arms. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank welcome. You. Any other questions, councils, relative to the agenda item? Seeing none, we're moving on. Going on to planner, please. Planner James Casiri, superintendent. Um, just an opening statement. I'm going to comment on my staff in the planning department, how wonderful they are, but there's only one, so I'll say how wonderful <laughs> she is. And it's a ditto on my comments with April. I, I don't run the planning department. I sign a lot of things and we have a lot of conversations, but Pam knows that department inside out and we couldn't have gotten by these past few years without her. So with that, I'll take any comments. Councilors, any questions relative to the planner agenda item? Council Dubois. Do you know when we're going to be hiring a full-time city planner? What's the plan with that? We're interview. There are interviews being done now. Um, and so first round, second round, do you have a projected hire date? I'm what's not your, involved in the interviews. I believe they're going to whittle it down to two or three candidates, and at that point, uh, the mayor will um, be involved in deciding which one he will present to you. Is Pam involved in those interviews? I don't believe she is, no. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councilor Dubois. Anybody else? Moving on. Next agenda item, Madam Clerk. War Memorial, James Casseri, Superintendent. Okay. Oh, well, the War Memorial is, uh, as you know, we've spent a lot of money on it recently, and and the mayor has uh, had the wisdom to put together uh, the <coughs> commission, mayor? What is it called? The, plan, the Memorial Memorial Trustees. Board of Trustees. And they are in process of making rules and regulations on what we're going to use the facility for. And at the last meeting they had, um, they decided that they were going to not rent it from June till September because we don't have AC in the building and we're trying to correct that situation. And by the time the fall rolls around, they'll have a pretty good idea of how and when and who and how we're going to use the building. So with that, any questions? Is there any questions? I have a, Ms. Ms. Cruz, Ms. Kassiri, good evening. How are you? Ms. Kassiri, could you tell us what happened to all the money when the Feinberg, when the Ken Feinberg came to Brockton and they made all that money and we paid my names down there on a brick? What happened to all that money? Because when you're talking about air conditioning, I mean, that, that would pay for it. I, I believe it would pay for it, and I just, you asked the question so I can give you the best answer to my knowledge that a gentleman by the name of Dr. Hagland was in charge of those funds, and I don't know how much uh, is in the funds, and I really don't know where or how much money there is there, Council. Mr. Connor, do you know? No, we don't know. Excuse me, Ms. Mayor. Right. I mean, I, I know that he has control of a, of a fund that was called, the, I believe it was called the Ken Feinberg Fund the, for the War Memorial Restoration Project. But Absolutely. how much of that money we've received and how much is left would uh, have a, be a question that would have to be asked to uh, Doc Haglin. I don't know what the reporting on the, or is required on that money. or I really don't know much about that. Money, Th Councillor. Through you, Mr. Casier. Mr. Mayor, can I, can I request that the solicitor send a letter to Mr. Haglin yes. or to Ken Feinberg? Because if there's money that should come back, yeah. it should come back. It's an excellent question, uh, Mr. President. Uh, I've asked the same question myself. 
Uh, the best answer I've got so far is the research that I asked to be done on the city side. There was no indication of any receipt of funds that I could identify through the records that uh, we checked in City Hall. So, um, yeah, I could certainly bring that to the solicitor and ask him. Uh, I, I'm not sure off the top of my head legally who, I mean, if it's an independent 401c3, I'm assuming, but I don't know. Uh, what our role would be in yeah i mean if we if we yeah. could do that i mean because you, you got to think everybody that paid for a brick we could do a class action against them if we need to right it's an excellent question to the to the to the best of my knowledge at this point through the extent that i've asked people in city hall to look through the the records uh, no one's been able to identify any receipts by the city of funds okay okay and it appears that uh kind of a recap of the funds because money was spent over several years uh, but it's almost all HUD money with s some contribution from the city yeah, I, mean, I, I could not identify any private funds being contributed yeah I mean if it's a 501c3 they have to do the, and Jay you'd know this they have to do their, their filings with the IRS to keep the status anyhow so we can yeah. get the AG involved if we need to yeah. I, I've just a lot of people have asked me where the hell yeah. the money go so so your request is that I ask the solicitor to research or <coughs> Or make an inquiry a legal inquiry probably would start with an inquiry and then depending what the response is we would go from there absolutely okay so uh, based upon your request I'll ask the solicitor to make an inquiry of whoever's responsible for that fund uh, as to an accounting yeah an accounting of it and disbursements etc thank Ab you Mr. Mayor. Be happy to do that thank you sir thank you mr. Kassiri through through the chair Council mr. president uh, just a point of interest uh, I, I remember uh, back in 2006 <laughs> I personally wrote a check for five hundred dollars for, right. for the bricks, and it was made out to the War Memorial Fund. Correct. I okay. So I mean, there has to be a record of, of where those yep. checks went. Just through through the yeah. chair. Thank I think you. a lot of us did. It's a good yes. question, and I'm actually glad it came up, Councillor. Thank you. But all, Councillor Dinapoli, Councillor Rodriguez. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Mr. Casari. How are you? I'm well. How are you? I don't know if I'm missing a, uh, a page on the budget sheets, but for some odd reason, I think on the bottom of my, um, on my page here, it says department grant totals and adds up to 2.3 million. Which sheet's that? On the, uh, on your, on the budget sheet. On the War Memorial budget. On the War Memorial one. Yeah. Um, I mean, unless that that money is stashed somewhere in there. Well, that that would have been money that would have already been spent on the building. No, no, I'm saying I'm saying on the overall recommendations, even from the department asking the mayor's recommendation, it kind of carries on over two million plus 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 dollars. I don't know about that one, Mr. Condon. Do you see that? It's it's not correct. Though. It's right here. In there. I don't have that either. I'm saying those numbers definitely do not add on to add up to two million dollars. But there's also at the top. Uh, Manning April's saying pool. that's public property, and it maybe it got mixed in. Is that the public property? No, I'm just saying it's under. All oh, right. Oh, it's oh okay. yeah yeah. It's under the War Memorial. It, it includes the other, just it includes the public property taxes one. It's okay, correct. no, it's just that it doesn't go in through, through a breakdown to let you know how, you know, because you're looking at the numbers in the sheet, when you add all those numbers down, for some odd reason, it doesn't add up to $2 million bucks. So that's why I was just saying that as an item. It's because it's one yeah, it's, it, feel free. The auditor is gonna give us information. Okay. It included the public property totals. It's one department, so it's a total of the departments. We broke it out to make it easier for you guys to see the different budgets. Okay, good. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Council, you all set? Yes, sir, I'm all set. Any Council Bonds? Yes, please. Um, the renovation for the War Memorial, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, a lot of that was done with HUD money, or all of it was done mostly with the HUD funds, correct? Uh, CDBG money. Oh. Okay, yep. uh, and the mayor said something about um, that money coming in in addition to some uh, contributions from the city. Wasn't there some kind of payback program or something with the War Memorial and um, why uh, it was offline or something for a while? Well, all, all HUD money is 
is to you're supposed to attempt to reimburse it. So when we go to rent the wall memorial out and use it, mm -hmm. the city doesn't just recapture all that money. There has to be some payback of that money to the federal government. Okay, is that reflected in here? What's no, because that would be a debt, right? Yeah, that's not in there. No. Yep. Yes, please. That situation would occur if we had a net operating gain for the building. So it doesn't start with dollar one. Okay. So at this point in the very limited use we've had of the building so far, the, the rental income has been nominal compared to our operating budget. When it would become, why that's an important factor, and it's a good question though, is when, if someone raises the issue and says, we ought to be setting the rates in a way to make a profit on it, that doesn't make any sense because if we were to make a profit, then we would be obligated to start paying money back to HUD. So I think this is a um, policy issue that the Board of Trustees will be addressing over the next couple months as they determine independently how they want to set the criteria and the rates and, and the types of uses that they want for the building. So this little break over the summer gives the Board of Trustees an opportunity to set some clear guidelines and rates and I, I think you know, some of the discussions are do you have different rates for profits versus non-profits? What are the types of uses we like in the building versus types of uses they may not want to lease the building to? And uh, quite honestly I believe that's why many years ago the War Memorial had a Board of Trustees formed that we've now restocked so that you know, it has its own body of uh, people that'll, you know, make those policy and protocol decisions for the building. I am one member of that committee, but one of one of five board members. Okay, so the original, um, I guess, mission for the War Memorial to get it back online and to start to generate some revenue, that's now been, uh, I guess, abandoned or because no, that they was pay? that was. For it to make revenue was never my mission. I don't know about people that were here before me. My mission is to... I thought to it was to put it back online, to rent it out, to start making all, some money. All, all, of, all of the above, but not to generate a net revenue. I never looked at it as a revenue producer. Okay. I think it's a very important public asset that was not being utilized. I think it belongs to the residents of the city. Okay. I think it's another positive for our downtown development. Um, I would, I, I'm asking the Board of Trustees to look at expanding the use of the auditorium as more of a performing arts center. Mm -hmm. um, I think doing that with um, a courtesy and respect to the veterans role in the building and, and we're enhancing that. We have plans to move the Veterans Services Office this year back over to the War Memorial Building where it was at one time, which will create not just foot traffic in and out of the building, but veterans foot traffic in and out of the building. Okay. And we've done that in a way that we're also accommodating the American Legion and the Italian American War veterans who are already housed there. Mm -hmm. So I do see a much bigger role for the building in terms of Brockton. I do think it's an asset that's been really underutilized, mm -hmm. but I think its value to the city is, is, is for all the things that it can do for us in terms of community <coughs> events, cultural events, making the downtown livable, tying in with other things we have going on in the city, not necessarily to generate revenue. So okay. I agree with everything you said except the piece about making okay. money off it. I, I, okay, I wasn't and, sure. And I, making money wouldn't do us any good because if we started making money on it, we'd have to start paying it back to the federal government. So where's the incentive? You know? Okay, so just to be clear. I, I'd rather keep it affordable and get the maximum use out of it for the people in the city. Okay, and just to be clear, just two more questions. So. Um, we're not in any kind of violation by not paying that money back. As no. long as we what? stay under like the threshold of right. income I, or whatever. I've had very specific discussions with BRA who yeah. has spoken with HUD and it would only become an issue if we were generating a net operating profit on the building. You're allowed to recoup maintenance expenses and things like that. Okay, and then just one more. Um, with this $2.3 million, it's kind of confusing. Is, is there another no, I, I think... Tally of the War Memorial that, that was just. Ex I'll defer that to the auditor. Okay. Is there a way maybe somebody could... The public out? property department includes the War Memorial, so that total includes the public property. We broke it out so you guys could see the different budgets. Right. But no, it's a total of everything. I, I understand, but is there a way to, to add these... Well, I guess I can do it on my phone. Oh, I just want to see it separate. Yeah. Like right oh, now, looking at this together... Mean, yeah. it, I don't have it separate, sorry. Okay. All right. Mr. Condon, could you separate it? Yeah, we can separate it. 
Oh, it's in. Oh, okay. All right. It is in the forecast. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll look at it. Thank you. Any other questions? No. We're gonna move on. Thank you, Mr. Casiri. Thank you. Good night, Councilors. Councilors, we're gonna be going on to DPW, and again, I read into the record last night the letter from Mr. Thorson. Um, he he has uh, unfortunately unable to attend tonight. He's on vacation out of the country. I want to take a moment to thank Mike Thorson. He's been commissioner DPW for many many years, and as we know, he's retiring this summer. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think we uh, we do owe a, a gratitude to him, and we want to thank Ma Mike Thorson, uh, and we wish him well in retirement. And I know he does have uh, some of his colleagues here tonight um, to be able to uh, discuss ag agenda items. So, Madam Clerk, if we could go on to number 11, please. DPW Commissioner um, Michael Thorson, Elaine Chai will be speaking. Good evening, Mr. Chai. How are you? Very good. Thank, thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you. Do you have a statement at all? Any questions? None. Okay, we're going to move on. That was easy. <laughs> <laughs> Next one, please. DPW Refuge, Michael Thorson, Craig Young. Mr. Young is going to be. Uh, Ben Shading and Mr. Sullivan. Mr. Good evening. Good evening, counselors. Uh, last year, the refuse uh, section of the operations division was transferred back to me under operations, uh, having come from the DPW administration. So I'll give you a quick overview, and then any specific questions you have on the budget will be given to you by Mr. Sullivan, who is the contract administrator and runs the uh, administrative end while I do the day-to-day -day operations. The budget for the refuse is basically level funded. Uh, we do have one opening there for a truck driver, which is open and funded, which we do need. There are currently four men down there, on the, no, three men on the street. The missing man would be a truck driver, which we need because he has a CDL. That position is needed because there's so much work with only three guys right now. So that position needs to be uh, needs to be filled as soon as possible. And at this point, I think I'll let uh, Patrick answer any specific Thank you, questions. Young. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Good evening. Good evening, Councilors. Councilors, any questions for Mr. Sullivan relative to this agenda item? Mr. Cruz. Uh, thank you. Thanks, uh, Mr. Sullivan. Quick question. I was just looking, and I s didn't even dawn on me until I just saw it, but I see zero in the budget for cameras. But we had put an ordinance in quite a few years ago. Yes. Uh, had we used cameras? Are we using cameras at some of those dumping yes. spots? We have and we do use cameras. And okay, I don't want to know specifically about it because we don't want the public to know where or when. But yes. so, so we've been successful with the program. We have been successful with the oh, program. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Sullivan? Seeing none. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Okay. Good thank evening, you, sir. Counsel. We're going to go on to the next agenda item, which is DPW Engineering. Howard Newton, Superintendent. Mr. Newton, good evening. I ask you this every year, Mr. Newton, how many budgets is this for you, sir? It's either 29 or 30. I'm not sure which at this point in time. I just am thankful I'm still looking at the green side of the grass. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for being here. Do you have a statement? No statement, Council. Okay. I take questions. Uh, Council DiNapoli. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Mr. Newton. Good evening. Job well done, sir, and uh, it's been a pleasure working with you. I know you're not going anywhere, but I'm just saying that it's a pleasure working with you. Just a question. Uh, is, there, is there any money in your budget for, uh, for doing uh, surveys for unaccepted streets? Very limited amount. I think there was 4,000 left this year. That's it. So That might do a survey for one street. Okay. If the street wasn't too long, an example was, would be in... Uh, we did one street, Eastfield Drive, a couple of years ago. That's a $6,500 survey. Right. It, and it's required by, by statute <coughs> that we do that to accept well, the street. We, we, I mean, we still have a few unaccepted streets, and we you have, have to have the money to do Quite a survey. number of unaccepted streets, but we also don't have any money to construct them. So when you accept them, you're accepting the liability, responsibility, <coughs> with no real no, thing in, in the very near future of being able to build them or to make the necessary repairs. So I would caution you on, on continuing to accept private ways that we know we don't have the funding to immediately move in and construct. Okay. Thank, thank As you. As I've sir. done every year. I've, I've no, I, I understand. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Newton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor. 
Consigliere. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Mr. Newton. Good evening. And I know you and I, uh, I'll come on the heels of my colleague from Ward 5 because I know last year I had to go to, or the year before I had to go to uh, Mayor Belzardi and have money put into the budget because I had on a street that had to be accepted, which was Curtis Street, if you remember. Correct. And um, if I've got to go to the mayor again this year and ask for ten <clears> or fifteen thousand dollars, I'm going to continue to do that because I have several streets that are going to come before um, you for acceptance of uh, to be accepted because not only do they need work on, but even the neighbors want them accepted. So um, I understand what you're saying, and I know w along with the fact that you know once we take responsibility, I know that, but. In this point in time, I believe it's it's a way for the ward council to at least be able to work with, um, you know, the neighbor, the neighbors, and, and, and the taxpayers that want the neighborhood streets taken care of. And and uh, I, I'll do that. I mean, if that's what we have to do, then that's what I'm going to have to do because it needs to be done. And I, I agree with you. There's several streets still out there for whatever reason. The forefathers left it that way. We've had to live with it over the years, but some of us are trying to get it, you know, conquered. It will never probably be conquered. You know that. And uh, you could still be here for another 50 years, and it's still, you know. But in any case, um, I just want to let you know that. I mean, I am going to talk to him I about that. I have no that. problem with yeah. that at all, okay. Counselor. I, I appreciate that and appreciate all that you do as well. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor Any other questions for Mr. Newton? I have a question. Council Dubois. Thank you. So, Mr. Newton, I understand what you're saying about accepting um, roads that we don't have the financial ability to uh, fund. So, what do you suggest happen? Well, I, I think that obviously we need an influx of money from somewhere, and I don't see that happening, and not not during what may be may or may not be left of my tenure. Uh, but I think in, in one respect, I understand what Councillor Ian Erie is saying, but in another respect, by accepting these streets, you, you, you give those residents false hope that, that now I'm on a list and I'm going to be, you know, next year my street's going to be constructed. Well, we have streets we've accepted 20 years ago that we still haven't been able to move into it to, at this point. So I think you give, you know, you give the rev residents false hope that, that they're next on the list when that simply isn't the case. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor. Any other questions for Mr. Newton? Seeing none, thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you, Councilor. Thank you for joining us, sir. Uh, next uh, agenda item, please. DPW Highway, Craig Young, Superintendent. Good evening again, Mr. Young. Good evening, Councilors. Uh, if I may, I'd like to give you a short statement and I'll Absolutely. take questions. Yes. The, the highway budget is level funded as it has been for the last five or six years. Uh, I do have, as I said with the refuse, I do have an open position in, in the highway, which is for a maintenance man. Uh, that came about by promotion up with the retirement of a foreman. So that position is open. I did want to tell you, uh, I have been speaking about this being shorthanded on the highway for the last five years. Uh, I've lost 18 men in the last five or six years. So I understand that everybody thinks there's 60 or 70 men down there waiting for the call, but there aren't. On a good day, I'll put, I will put 12 men on the street for 330 miles of roadway. That's on a good day. On a bad day, there might be six or seven men. So we're uh, woefully understaffed down there. Uh, the men are doing a good job. Fortunately, I'm getting a lot of extra work done with overtime. So uh, I just wanted to make you aware of that. And uh, at this point, I'll take questions. Thank you, Mr. Young. Any questions? Councilor Stadinsky. You and your personnel and all the personnel work for the city are much appreciated. Thank you, Councilor. Uh, and uh, I, I just want to uh, ask you, Craig, uh, I see the street sweepers out, things like that. Just call the regular number for that also. Yes, the street sweeping the, uh, is done out of the highway, uh, probably half to a little more than half is put out private contract, and the other half is done by the city of Brockton. Uh, generally, we sweep the city someplace between three and four times a year. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. Thank you, Council. Any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Young. We're going to move on to the next agenda item, please. Maintenance. Maintenance. Craig Young, Superintendent. Uh, maintenance is very simple, level funded, two men. Uh, that's my mechanics. Could use a third one, but the two guys that I have are uh, hard working and work long hours. So I'll take questions now. Any questions for Mr. Young relative to this? 
Seeing none, we'll move on. Thank you, Mr. Young. Thank you, councillors. Have a good you, evening. Thank you, sir. Next agenda item, please. Renewable energy, Elaine Shire. Good evening again, Ms. Chai. How are you? Good. Any statement at all? No. Any questions at all, councillors? Councillor Rodriguez, you have a question, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Elaine, for being here. Uh, I have a question. Um, uh, maybe I was, I was reading this wrong, but uh, I'm looking at the, uh, at the solar field. Uh, somehow I have it that it, it generates around uh, $108,000 a year. In, and but there's the uh, on the spending side of things. It looks like we're spending around four hundred thousand dollars. Same problems. Uh, the budget books you have are um, they, they come from what's called a crystal report. The city's uh, accounting system and budgeting system is intact and it doesn't have a report writer native to it, which produces the reports in the formats that you're used to. So we use a report writer to pull that information out. In terms of the organizational structure, the accounting organizational structure, renewable energy and the commissioner's budget are in the same organizational structure. So what you're seeing there are a couple of totals and sometimes when they do this report writing, they don't separate it properly to segment it the way you would like to see it in those reports. That's what's causing that. Yeah, but you, you can understand that some of us newbies that aren't really oh, yeah. used to this stuff, oh, yeah, and sure. when, we, when we look at these numbers, we're going down to the bottom yeah, of where that. it says department numbers, and you're looking at department numbers, it basically says that, you know, oh yeah, we've been generating around 108,000 right. worth of energy a year, and we're spending 400,000. Is it really worth having, basically? You know? No, I understand, I understand your concern, but th the problem is, as I described, it's how the information is compiled and then separated for these budget books. The renewable energy budget consists of about 115,000 in revenues. Uh, the total you were looking at before was 108,000, which was a short year. There was a couple right. of problems with equipment. Usually it's about 120 or so. We budget 115 to be conservative. And then if we beat that budget, there's a retained earnings certification that comes out of the Department of Revenue, and that gets added into the budget the next year, and that's what's actually being spent in that budget. I also had another, another question with that, and it seems that um, on, I think it's um, item uh, 531700. Uh, it had an expenditure of zero last year on 2013. On the revised in 14, it went up to 15,000, and it's been budgeted for 15,000. The department asked for 15,000. The mayor okayed 15,000. So can somebody just explain that? What what that is? Which number is it? Too? It's the contract services, Elaine. Other contract services? Yeah. That really is just um, in case something comes up. I need to have somebody out there that will. Uh, I can get the, you know, to hire somebody or get somebody online, it's just another contract services. Okay, so it's just there in case, uh, in case, in case we have an issue with that. something comes up. Just a buffer. Just a buffer. Buffers are good. Um, oh, right. And then the, uh, above that, we have the, the consultant. Is that the folks that actually do uh, provide some maintenance to the uh, facilities? So on the oh, on right the above the right above the contract. Yeah, other contract. That's just um, ground maintenance and and things like that that come up that need to be done. There's a lot of uh, lately. There's been a lot of maintenance, um, vegetation control, things like that that have to be done. Under the consultant, uh, that's just technical assistance in case something comes up. So basically, the um, the plant itself, uh, let's say, in 2012, it generated $125,000, and it basically costs around $90,000 or so to to maintain it. So there's a a a, a plus about of about thousand, but I don't usually spend. 
the whole budget? No, but I'm saying I'm looking at 2013, your actuals were 92,000. Uh -huh. And then it basically generated around 125. Yep. Yep. We averaged over since, we, since the inception is about 130, 35,000. But last year there was an issue with the, um, some of the um, equipment, and that's why it was a little bit less. Okay. The, the balance of that is, is it's called expense reimbursement to the general fund. Uh, the city issued bonds to help in the development right, of that. Right. It was mostly grant expense, but there was also some bonds. To the extent that that fund generates enough revenues after the other expenses, it helps the city pay with the debt service, which is about $100,000 a year. Okay. So it's a contribution to the debt service. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Chair, Council Dubois. I, I'm just a little confused, just to follow up on my fellow councillor's questioning. So first I have a question from a constituent before I ask other questions. Does the city pay rent for, for these solar fields to the gas company? And how much is that? $3,200. $3,200 a what? A year. A year, okay. So can you explain the revenue? So, And I'm sorry to repeat um, a question that was potentially already posed because I was paying attention, but I just wasn't exactly following all the numbers. So it cost $421,000 to operate. Okay, so explain that to me. Just one more explanation. No, that was it's part of the admin budget, the way it comes down, like Jay just explained. I didn't understand it. So can we just explain it one more time with different language and then maybe I'll be able to follow it. Uh, basically, the city's budget is organized into accounting codes, and the renewable energy budget falls under the accounting code for the DPW Commissioner's Office. That's the way it's accounted for. I'll blame Anne Marie and Heidi Chuckran for that, that it's not separated. <laughs> but Could we do that for next year? Yeah, yeah we, sh right. we should, I think. We'll take, we'll take a look it, at that because yeah. it's resulted in confusion in a couple of budgets. The same thing on the public property and the war, uh, war memorial. Yeah. There's an organizational supervision there which we say, okay, that's who's responsible for it, but it's really two separate budgets. So you're getting a total there which is commissioner's budget plus the renewable energy so budget. So the commissioner's budget plus the renewable energy budget is $421,733. Is that right? Are you following? I don't have that, that calculation on mine, so I'm assuming I don't have, it on, I don't have it on mine I'm either. looking at this page that starts with um, energy ENT slash services at the top of it. Is there a second page somewhere that I have to go to a different tab to see? Or does my book have a different piece of paper in it? You see, some of the books I think I that were that. paired didn't. Could you maybe didn't. come and look at it, Jay, and then you can just tell me what if, if my book is something different or? So this is this was the cover page, yeah. and then I got this, and yes. then I got that. So that's four hundred twenty-one thousand seven hundred thirty-three mm -hmm. dollars, right? All, it's all of these. It's all of these totals. Okay, so so what is the energy totals? Where are the energy ones? So this is what the energy costs? Yes. And this is what the DPW Commissioner's Department costs, or just his oversight of this program? No, that's the DPW Commissioner's Department. So maybe that should be separated? It should be separated. Okay. What, what's happening is this total is being pulled in by this report writer, and it's being pulled in and confusing everybody because it doesn't really belong for that page. So it costs $127,000 to operate, with yep. 3000 for rent. Yep. And what does it bring in? It brings in about $115,000 a year. So it brings in $115,000 a year, and then do we get extra money for doing other things? So it isn't a loss, because right now that oh, looks it is a like loss. it's a loss. Okay, it's a loss. It's a loss. And so why is that a good idea? Maybe go over there. I'm not trying to tell you to go away. <laughs> Just so the, the I want to thank public... Mr. Connor. My nine years on the council, I've never seen him come on this side uh -huh. to help. I appreciate it. I really thank do. You. I do appreciate it. And uh, just so the public can see your, your beautiful it, face. That's it the is a loss, and it was always intended, or not intended, but expected to be a loss because the cost of assembling that field when you took into account the, uh, the bond cost yeah. was greater than we were going to be able to generate in terms of revenues. So what, uh, what was decided at the time, Mayor Units was very eager to develop the field. So what was this, because it was a brown field, but what was decided at the time was if it can make its money with respect to the operating cost, but not the debt service cost, and then make some kind of a contribution toward the debt service cost, we'll go ahead. 
and that's what it does basically. So did this project get that brownfield cleaned up? Yeah. So that's the benefit, well beyond it being a renewable energy source, which is something that we should support, yes. that was a brownfield that got cleaned up as part of this process. Yes. So that's a major that's, benefit. That, that, was, that was the gain. The second gain was it was a demonstration of a mm -hmm. solar project. Uh, it preceded, this project preceded a lot of the state incentives that yeah. now exist for solar development. Mm -hmm. But we, we proceeded with it anyway because the mayor at the time and the council was supportive to develop it in a way that would clean up a brownfield. There was some hope about doing the property across the street as well, which is also owned by the gas company, I think. But the topography there isn't as favorable. There's a lot more of a slope. But this one got done. Could I get a detail on who gets the $115,000? It goes into the city's coffers. So the cost of the oh, one oh, where the hundred and fifteen thousand yes. goes. I think I'd like to know where that where that goes if I don't if I don't she see can, it or it's another that. kind of confusing thing that I didn't quite tweet out. There's a, there's a um, description right in the back that tells you exactly what goes in which account. What's the top um, word on it? It's, uh, it's the FY two thousand fifteen budget description. Does it start with ordinary maintenance services? I'll come to you and you can just show me the paper. That's not it? Yeah. So when I look at that page, mm -hmm. which I appreciate you putting in and directing me toward, um, I'm looking for it right now. Okay. So um, 28, 28, 40, 52, 60, 63. I'm only adding up uh, 60, somewhere around $63,000 um, of costs. Could you get me a detail? Because, like, if you add, if I had a calculator, I could do it even better. But if you add, you know, 3,000 plus 23,000, I'll just do it really quick. Thank you, Shirley. 3,200 plus 23,686 plus. 8,755 plus 5,150 plus 28, That adds up to $69,661 enumerated on this page, but the cost is 15000 So could you give me like a detail report before we have to vote on this? I'd like to know who's, who is getting the $115,000 a year. Like what, what, like line by line item like we have here where I know I can look in this budget and I can see that, as an example, my brother makes X dollars working okay. for the city. I'd like to know or we have to use X dollars for telephone. Okay. On this line, it says technical assistance and grant services, but it doesn't have a, a dollar amount next to yes. it. So I'd like to know not only what the technical assistance and grant services cost, I'd like to know who gets paid that amount of money for that. It, it's, it's just like in case it's needed, I, if, I don't use, if I don't need it, I don't use it. So, so it's not a specific person. There's okay. no uh, personal services here. It's just if something comes up, it's, uh, there's a maintenance cost here, which is if you look in the back there on the other services, that's this twenty thousand seventy. Which where is that? And under that job, the description. On the that same I gave page. You. Yeah. On if the you same look page. under like other. But the numbers on this page add up to sixty-nine thousand six hundred and sixty-one dollars. Right, but the. And you have a cost of one hundred and fifteen thousand dollars. Right, but twenty-five hundred dollars is for, um, for electricity, and, real estate charges. We pay the taxes on this land. That's about twenty thousand. So there is. Let's see. Here's. Oh, there no, is. no. I see the I see the line item, and it says, 
It's, oh, here's the 150. Mm -hmm. So the 115, so you have that at the top. Thank I'm sorry, I got confused there. So the consultant got paid 10,000 and the contracted services was 15 and then the other services was 28. What, what makes up other services? The other services is for the Solon America Corp. We have, an, we have a contract with them and they do the, uh, any maintenance or anything like that that has to be done and we're required, it's about 28,870 per year. Well, I appreciate you. good until 2016 on this one. Yeah, I appreciate this because I had an hour long meeting with a constituent and he asked me a lot of questions and I feel a lot more capable of answering them now. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you, thank you Councilor. Any other questions? Saying none, Elaine, thank you. You're thank welcome. you very much. Yeah. Have a good night. night. We're gonna move on to the next agenda item, please. DPW Sewer, Larry Rowley, Superintendent. Superintendent Rowley, good evening. Good evening, Councilor. Councilors, um, brief statement on the sewer budget. It is a level funded budget. Um, I do have two vacant unfunded positions that I, I would really like to fill. Um, explain to the mayor, the mayor's on board with this. Um, they're critical to the operation and maintenance of this of the sewer department. Um, we did have some retained earnings like we did in last year's budget and we are putting that money to good use. We have a project right now going on uh, Chester and Bartlett and Fuller and West Park. That's a $1.5 million job and we wanna continue to improve the sewer infrastructure with this money. And also we are still doing some uh, minor upgrades at the wastewater treatment plant with this extra money. So with that, I'll take any questions. Thank you, Mr. Rowley. Council Dubois. Thank you. Thanks for being here, Mr. Mr. Rowley. Um, what, are the, what, are the, what are the infrastructure improvements? What streets are those gonna That's, be That's um, Bartlett Street, West Park, Fuller, that whole area down in there. Um, council, it was undersized water mains and it was on a flat grade. So we, we had a lot of constituent complaints down there. Yeah. And we increased the size of the pipe and the grade of the pipe. So Great. the sewer will flow better. Sure. How much um, is that gonna cost? That's, that's 1.5. That's great, that's great. Um, and then the only other thing I'd like to bring your attention to, um, are, are you gonna be advocating for a rate increase this year? No. For the sewer rates, and you're not? No, we're not. Okay, so there's no rate increase in here? No, there isn't. All right, so I'm just going to um, say this now, and I think it's part of the budget, so I hope that the chair will agree. Um, there's an ordinance before us right now to um, allow for irrigation meters. Yes. And I've found 10 different studies across the country where municipalities have done detailed studies of the benefits from irrigation meters. And every single one of them says that you can expect to double your sewer rates in five years if you go with irrigation meters. So I wanna say that here at this budget hearing, I want, I'm gonna forward these reports to each and every one of you because if we go that route, we're gonna to have to be advocating for more money for the sewer department by the end of this year, and that's gonna affect this budget. And I don't wanna belabor the point because we're gonna talk about it at council, but it's something that's really stressing me out because we're having such issues with our water rates right now, and I just am really worried about the potential of causing the city a lot of heartache, and all these studies also say it does not promote conservation. So those are my two issues. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Council. And again, Council Yanieri is the chair of the ordinance. I designate him as such so you can represent that when, when it does come before our colleagues Thank on you. the ordinance committee. Thank you. Anything else, Mr. Rowley? Council Azak. Good evening, Mr. Rowley. Good evening. Um, I have a question. Can you update us what's going on with Stonehill and the sewerage with um, Stonehill College? Yes, um, I, I did have a conversation with the mayor last week and the, it's the beginning stages of negotiations. We're waiting to get through the budget hearing and I have to sit down with Jay and we're gonna go over some numbers and start negotiating with them. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Rodriguez. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good evening, Larry, how are you? Good, uh, good, Councilor. Is there any way we can, um, we can get, and I know, we're, Mr. Chairman, if you just allow me a little bit of leeway here. A little here, bit. Just a little bit. bit. Is there any way we can get, um, a breakdown of what the uh, let's say the the businesses in the uh, in the community 
the ones that actually are within the boundaries of the city, what they pay for sewer? Yes, that's, the, you, you're talking about in commercial or industrial users? Correct. Yes, that's not a problem. We, so, could, do, we so, could do that. So we can get an idea, uh, I mean, because a lot of times it comes up in terms of what, going back to Stonehill or some of these uh, other businesses that are hooked up to our system. Mm -hmm as to what they're, they're paying, just to give us an idea, basically. I mean, I would want to know what Brockton Hospital, for instance, pays for sewer okay. in relations to maybe a Stonehill, you know, which is probably a more comparable. We, I, we can get all that for you, Council. Yeah. It, That's we, not a problem. I would really appreciate it. At least it would give us a sense. I don't know exactly how you feel about it, but yeah, that was the little leeway that I was asking for. You got it. Thank you, just, Mr. Just give, it, just give us a little time to get gather all that information for you, but I can, I, I'll, I'll work with Jay on that. We'll get it for you. Thank you, Mr. Not Rally. a problem. Th thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good point. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. Mr. Rally, thank you very much. Thank you, counselors, for all your support. I appreciate it. Sir. Uh, before we go to uh, agenda, the last agenda item of the evening, which is DPW Water, we want to recognize we have three water commissioners in attendance tonight. We want to thank them. We have Ozzie Jordan here. He's also a school committee member. Thank you for being here. Kate Archer, thank you for being here. And uh, Bernie Hassan. Uh, Bernie, thank you for being here. Mr. Creighton. And I'll, I'm joined, uh, counselors, I'm joined by my, my, our chairman for the Water Commission, Ozzie Jordan, who will begin uh, the statements. Thank you very much. Department. Good evening, Mr. Jordan. Good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to uh, be here this evening to uh, present some information to you. Uh, our budget is level funded. It has been for the last four years. Um, it's created some problems for us, but that's a, another situation. Uh, one of the major problems, I guess, has been no capital projects. And I think most of you understand if you have a home, as I use as a normal example, and for 10 years or six years, you don't do anything to it, you know what will happen. So again, uh, in the case of the water department, that's, I'll just leave it at that. Uh, we have been paying back this year to the general fund, because uh, we've had, because of the meters, the problem we have with the meters, we have better meters in now, we are finding that we are gaining a small amount of money. So we've been able to pay a small amount in, back towards the general fund on past money that we've owed. Uh, DSAL, that's one of the favorite projects that's, that you folks have dealt with a lot more than we have, it's about 36% of our budget. We look at that as being a gold mine in the future, probably two or three years from now, if possible, if that's something we, the city of Brockton, could owe, uh, that would really pay off, I believe, for us. Um, you've had people talk to you about uh, what the sales have been, what the opportunities have been for other cities and towns, uh, hasn't been too great for us thus far. We happen to know that some of the other towns and cities, their wells are getting to the point, they're gonna be forced to somewhere go and get water. So maybe, if we're lucky, uh, some of that will change and turn around. I'm not talking just to the point that they're running low, I'm talking about Lily running dry. So, uh, plus there's some changes in the EPA that's coming up that may force them to have to do some things too. If we had, oh, and by the way, the, the uh, cost of, of water, people forget, uh, like you probably spend more water, money buying bottled water than you do on your quarterly payments for water. If people divide that back through, I think most families realize that is happening. So that's something also I want them to remember. Um, personnel, that's a, that's a big issue for us. Uh, over the years, we've, we've had problems as far as keeping up. We've lost 14 people uh, over the years, and that's really affected us. You know, we're in a position in the city not just being for the public safety part, as far as you know, firefighting, et cetera. Any one of us, you wake up in the morning, and for some reason we don't have water. If one of our mains break, and we only have one crew, and half the time we're using a lot of overtime to keep folks together, we would need really two operating crews uh, to, to keep the city really going the way it needs to. And what we've done in the past with our leak uh, situation as far as um, really closing down that, and we've done a great job. That's helped us saving on water. But with one crew, we don't have the ability to do that. We also were doing, what, uh, how many feet was it was a year? A miles, actually, 
a mile and a half a year of replacing pipes uh, you know, around the city, which is something, again, it's an ongoing process. It's like, again, I use my... my Mr. Chairperson, point of information, uh, are we discussing the Water Commission or the Water Department here? I'm, and I'm confused by the tabbing in the booklet because it has Water Commission, but well, the numbers the, seem... The, the Water Department is what's before us, but the Water Commission, historically, as long as we've been on the Council, uh, has the opportunity to talk before Mr. Creedon does. Okay, so we're discussing, I, I just want to make sure I'm understanding what the conversation here is about and who's representing whom. The Water Department, of which the Commission has oversight on also, if you look at the ordinances. That's correct. correct. So, the, so the budget before us is the Water Department budget, correct? Correct. That's correct. The Commission itself doesn't have a separate budget per se. Uh, thank you. Okay. Uh, that's because I was saying over the last several years, we've lost 14 people. Um, and I know, uh, Councilor Stewart, you asked last year about the elimination of two of the uh, meter readers. That has happened. Uh, the remaining meter readers uh, backflow, they're licensed inspectors, they're backflow inspectors. We have one four person at the moment. And we do have funded, um, let's see, one, two, three, four additional s slots, but not manned at this point. I think one's manned. Uh, one clerk slot is manned, but the other three slots are not manned, which would put almost a full crew in the street. We'd be short one person of another full crew in the street. And with that, I'll ask, answer any questions. Anybody has any questions for either Mr. Jordan or Mr. Creedon, Council Dubois? I do. So I just, uh, I'm just going to make this, uh, in this part of the budget book, it talks about your priorities. And um, once every two months, I get the most incensed voicemail from a woman that lives on Tina Ave and doesn't leave her name and says that she's, she's very upset, a woman that lives on Tina Ave, and I never get to speak with her, but she leaves me, leaves me um, very angry voicemails. Um, and I don't blame her because the street is a mess. And we talked about fixing it for four years, and I know that your hands are tied as well. But um, I just want, if she happens to be watching, um, her to know that that is your number fifth priority, is getting that road done on this budget list. It's just that your hands are tied because um, it's, it, the, the voicemails are probably some of the most angry voicemails I've got, and I can't blame her because the road, the pipes have been brought up, and then they've been left there for the summer, and the people have to weed whack around them, and they think they're gonna be put in, then the pipes were removed, and then they were brought up the next summer, and they were left on people's lawns, and people had to weed whack around them, and nothing has been done. So I have this group of folks that I'm really fighting for, and it's, it's not working out. And I know that you may not have an answer, but can you just please comment on this so if anybody's watching from that street, they have an idea of what's happening? I, I will comment. I appreciate in, in defense it. of you, you have asked us many a times during the year to get Tina Rav done. We fully agree with you. We want to get it done. We want to get the best pressure color of the water everything for, for that Could for that street but we just story? don't have we don't have the funds right now to get that done the reason we did have some funds we were going to phase that explain if you what remember that means. right yes i do but explain that so the people if we were going to phase we were going to do this in phases each budget to get that done because if i remember right it's over 3000 linear feet of pipe to get done that's a lot for us to do now when we when, when we lost our funds we lost our help so that's why we, we, we were trying our best to get that done. That's why the pipe was being brought up there. Then we had to take it out of there because some of your constituents did not want that pipe on their front yard. Well, this is so part of the we issue. were damned if we do, damned if we don't. So this is where we stand right now. That, that Tina Rav is already, it's been uh, surveyed, planned, engineered. It's ready to go out to bid. If you give me that one, I think it's 1.3 to get that done, we could do that tomorrow. Yeah, so it's ready to go. It's ready to go. You just have to get $1.5 million to get it done. It, 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 it is, yes. 
because it most in the biggest part of that cost is the street repair. That street is a mess. It is. I don't blame your constituent. They're our customers. Yes. I want to. We all want to please them, and when you want to please your constituent. I do. How do we do it? We 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 this. I don't know. We need funds to do this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad. I just wanted you know. I just wanted um, everyone to know that it is on the agenda, and I, I do apologize to the folks on Tina who had gotten their and, hopes and, up and several we do times. Also. And we do also yeah. because we we feel as though the residents of Brockton are paying good money for water and sewer, yeah. and we want to provide the best we can for those people. We do. You do. Thank it's just you. a matter of money. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Denapoli, followed by Rodriguez. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, Larry, you can get back up there. We, we'll, we'll, we can talk about this. Um, <laughs> how do? We, okay, you said you said you needed some money to fix Tina Avenue. Okay, I'm sure there it, are. It, it, uh, there's many, many. It's just not Tina Ave. No, there is I, a lot in your ward and. and Okay. Um, Council of Dubois Ward, How Ian, do, there's one in um, what Council you, of Cruises Ward. Explain to the people that are out there and explain to us exactly what you need to fix it. Money. How do we, how do we get the money? Do we raise nobody, water nobody, and sewer yeah, rates? In, 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 I, I, I don't want to raise the rates. You don't want to raise the rates, but I think that's the only way we're going to be able to get these funds to do this work. Okay. This infrastructure is old. This infrastructure doesn't go to sleep at night. It runs 24-7. I understand that. There, there, there's a life expectancy of all the pipes in the ground. Okay. I think, and, and we're, we've exceeded that part of the pipe. Okay. I mean, Councilor um, Cruz on Torrey Street has a pipe in the ground on Torrey Street that I think it was put in 1906. 1906. It's, it's been in the ground. <laughs> it's as old as Timmy, yeah. It's as old. <laughs> so that just shows to tell you that it, it, we have to continue to work on our water infrastructure like we are with the sewer. We have to do it. How we do it? Okay, I'm going to. It's up to you. I'm going to ask a question. Okay, if you ask to raise the water rates, yes. Do our Towns of Whitman in Abington and whoever is on our water system get an increase also? Well, they, we have an IMA with them, so that is a con, that's contractual. Um, if you raise the rates of Brockton, do they get, do, do they get a rate increase? Yeah, I, don't, I don't think. That rate would, could be brought up and would be brought up. The last time the rate increased, when you increased the rates here as city council, the water commission increased the out of town rate, and that has to do with the original legislation. But it's uh, it would be raised to whatever the second block is uh, using that same formula. Okay, here's the second. Probably do that during our rate hearing um, in in when's right, that? In? About two weeks, I think it is. Well, whenever. You not that rate. rate. Not right. Councils, I rate just want to right. remind you again. Water rate increases or proposals or thoughts is not before us tonight. We shouldn't be talking about it. We should be talking about the budget. <clears throat> I understand and I appreciate, the, but it's a discussion for a later date. And I know for a fact that Ward 2 Council is putting resolve in, and the Water Commissioners is going to be coming in before us in July. So let's move on. Okay, gentlemen, I guess we're done. <laughs> You're welcome. But the, it brings All up right. the, the, the manpower fine. issue. Also, all right, that manpower issue is how getting streets done, and that Mr. Rowley needs every worker he has. Okay. Council Rodriguez, Council Denapoli, you done? I guess I am. <laughs> yes, thank you. For now, Council Rodriguez, followed by Council Barnes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I guess my question would actually go for Mr. Condon, uh, and this, uh, Mr. Chairman, actually has to do with the budget. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Condon, uh, I'm looking at this sheet again. Uh, uh, excuses for being the one of the newbies here, not quite uh, seeing this uh, as the more senior guys would see this. But I'm looking at this, and it says the uh, the water debt service. Yeah. You look at it in 2013. It was 1.2 million dollars, and then re one, two, one, two. But then the department requests two million yeah. for the water debt service. And it seems that the mayor has basically cut that to absolutely nothing. 
And then you go down to um, where it says water expense reimbursement. The department requested zero and the mayor requested 2.3 million. Right, right. Yeah, I understand. The, if the water uh, budget is appropriated from retained earnings as opposed to revenue, it's a separate appropriation and it shows separately because it's coming from a separate source. So in some years, the debt service is paid for by the system's retained earnings, in other years, it isn't. In terms of the, in terms of the debt service budget also, uh, 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 Mr. Creedon may prepare a request on that, but the actual debt service budget is determined upon what's the actual outside, uh, outstanding issues, the debt issues, that's, it's a backup in here, you can see what the actual cost of the debt service is. And then if there's a, an appropriation request for additional, if it's gonna be granted by the mayor, with the council's approval, that would show there too. There isn't any new debt service here, so that's just existing debt service. The expense reimbursement line is calculated in my office. They don't have the information to do it. And what that recovers, and if you look back in these back pages as an explanation of how it's calculated, mm -hmm. what we do is we look at the cost of health insurance and pension costs for their employees. Uh, if there's insurance costs that's being carried for their buildings in my budget, the insurance's budget's in the finance office, they get charged back for that. If there were appropriations from the stabilization fund to finance contracts, they get charged back for that because you know that's, that's their cost. And there's also an allocation on, an, uh, on the same basis as we described last night for the school system of indirect cost of service out of the treasurer's budget and my budget and the law department budget and the accounting budget. And that's what that expense reimbursement consists of. But, but why, um, and if it, I'm assuming that it says 2013 uh, actual expenditures. Um, in 2013, you had $900,000, mm -hmm. and in 14, you actually had $900,000. Now you're going all the way up to 2.3? Right, because the, uh, uh, the budget in uh, fiscal 14 was insufficient in revenues to fully pay the general fund for those costs. So we only recovered what was left in the revenue budget to recover. This year, they're getting additional revenues in because their meter program is fully installed. And thankfully, some of the meters that had, uh, I don't want to say, some of the customers which had disappeared, uh, meters that were getting built, which had disappeared as a result of the recession, are coming back online now because there is some new construction going on in the city and some of the vacant homes have been sold. So their water revenues are actually up this year a little bit, about 4%, I think. And as a result of that, there's enough room in the budget to pay this year the full cost of what was owed to the general fund for the cost that we carry. And you see that as being 2.3? Yes, that's without number. Okay. Right. Now, moving down to the D cell, uh, in 2013, uh, we paid them $5.0 million, right? Uh, last year went up to $6 million. Yep. And again, the department asked for $6.2 million, and yet the mayor recommended $6.3 million. Right. Why, why such a... Well, I think there may have been a miscalculation on the, on the initial request from the department, but the desal contract is on a contract year, and so you've got to be looking for a fiscal year budget for one part of the year is on, it's on a, it's, it's on, it's on a contract schedule. It begins in January, I believe, okay? It begins in January, so if the calculation isn't done initially correctly out of the water department, it gets corrected here, and that's why that shows us a difference. But I'm saying that... Uh, I mean, this contract has been on now for, for several years. Yeah, and it's, and it's continuing to escalate. But are we expecting to see an increase, yes. let's say, in three years yes. for this thing to be up to about seven something? Yeah, the dollars? contract provides for a 20-year uh, period of payment of these fixed charges. And I believe the first 10 years, there is an incremental escalation each year in the uh, commitment, which the commitment is actually... Um, a reservation of the plant's capacity to the city's exclusive use. So it began at about two million gallons a year. The plant's got a capacity of just under five million. So in that first year, two million gallons of capacity was reserved to the city's exclusive use. And that requirement, which is an obligation of us to pay and an obligation of them to be ready to serve to that amount at least, uh, that has escalated according to the contract and it peaks at 4.07 million gallons. And I think that's in year 10 and we're in year six now? Yes. So you've got a few more years to go. I think right now we're about 3.56 million gallons a day, is that right? Yes. 
And so you've got another half million to go before you're, you're done with the escalations. There's also a price escalator that's kicked in at this point too. And the $95,000 above it for the variable charge, yeah. Yeah. what is that for? Okay, when the system decides to buy water from the desal plant, there's an additional charge. The fixed cost simply reserves the capacity of the plant. If you buy water, there's a charge, I think $1.23 for 100000 Okay, it's a dollar dollar twenty eight for a thousand gallons. Unbelievable. Uh, thank you, Mr. Condon. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Thank Chairman. Uh, ju just through the chair, uh, is uh, Aquaria coming back? Sometimes in the uh, in the summer, did we not put in a? Yeah, we did. Yep. To have them come back and maybe, to, because to me it's kind of ridiculous that in just two years this thing has ballooned to. $1.3 million, right. more than what we paid in, uh, in 2013, so by the yeah, time- Yeah, we continue that matter, but I, 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 for one, I don't think anybody else on this body has gotten anything that we requested that day, so we'll continue with that, and uh, they'll be in, summer session, they'll be in in July. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, Council Barnes. Uh, yes, uh, gentlemen. There are several uh, line items in several of the budgets about clothing allowances and all these other kinds of things. But in um, Mr. Jordan's presentation, if I remember correctly, you said you know there's been a, lo a loss of personnel in some of the crews. You only have one crew, so I'm just looking at um, the change and you know just in line with my my brothers and sister here with the comparisons of 2014, 15, and 13. It's gone up like. 30 grand, 40 grand for clothing. And, and if, unless I'm reading that wrong, clothing, A-L-L-W, that's clothing allowance, correct? This is, yeah, Would that be, for, is this a combined that, budget with yes. sewer as well? That, no, it's not. No. Okay, so. That's, that's contractual, counselor. Oh. That's already been bargained. That's, that's right. what that clothing allowance is. It's under the CBA, is. collect the bargaining agreement. That's, oh, okay. That's a fixed cost for us. Okay, all right, thank you. Just, just looking to see where it's coming from. Thank you, sirs. Are you good, counselor? Um, yeah, I'm not talking about the purchase of clothing, because there's another one on here about the purchase. It's, it's that, still good. That, that is something that we purchase, rain gear, boots, gloves. Okay, so it's $10,000 for clothes. Construction How much? 10000 If yes, you put them together. That's for their, their, their vests and helmets and all the safety. How many people on this crew? Excuse me? How many people on the crew? Well, I have to out outfit the whole department. So I, I, they, the water department runs 24-7. I have two guys on 4 to 12, two guys on midnight to 8. And then I, I have um, weekend shifts on also. So I have a total probably, I just counted them too, I think 37, but that's counting me and the clerks. So I, I'm going to say maybe around 26, 27 men that I have to outfit with safety equipment. Oh, and safety equipment, okay. And, 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 and those safety jackets, they're expensive. They're about okay. $75 to $80 a piece. And helmets and the, the utility belt stuff and, and all that stuff? Is that what you're boots, talking about? boots and helmets and okay. eyewear and anything for the ears. Okay, I wasn't thinking that. So we have to that. be... Okay. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. You good, Council? Yes, thank Council you. Council Azak. Good evening, uh, gentlemen. I have a couple of questions, and they're totally different. The first one is on the desal plant. Have they ever supplied us with any water? Has it ever run? Has it ever worked? Has it ever? Yeah, yes. The, city? Um, the last time we were running it uh, during the flushing period to offset what was being flushed, okay, and we took in, what was it? Uh, we're using it presently. Yeah, and we're presently using it. We, we had an expenditure, expenditure in our budget, and we were utilizing that to uh, make, you know, make sure that they were doing what they said they can do. So, so they can supply Yeah, there's no question on that. That's been done since the original testing. It's a number of times it's been tested. We call for water 24 hours beforehand, and 24 hours later we do have the water. That's the, that's the contract. 24 hours. Right. During this time of the year, Councillor, when people are filling pools using to grow their lawns, uh, it was... Uh, thought that this would be a time, as we did have the money in the variable fee fund, to take water and therefore retain uh, our, our Silver Lake supply so, so it would last longer through the year. 
So that is being used at 1.5 million, 1 million a day. Thank you. The other question is, um, actually I'm not sure who would answer it, but at one point our water department, um, our program, computer program, I, it was explained to me, but it was explained to me that we have three different offices. One office generates billing that is sent out to the residents. Another office collects payment. I'm not sure the other one's probably maintenance. Has that kind of, have we gotten a program that we're keeping track of which bills are paid, what's outstanding? You, you could actually go online to, in my case, 37 Waldo Street. Go online, look on uh, bill pay, and you can see what my water bill is and whether it's paid. I understand, I, and I pay my bill online if I can. But I mean, my question is, is are we keeping track here in City Hall? Are we keeping track of bills that are being paid so yes. they're not out, left outstanding? Yes, the question is yes to that. There's two parts to that. We have uh, two clerks that are actually assigned to do that. The collection is done here at City Hall. We don't do the collection ourselves. Uh, so you have three, as you said, three separate departments or sections of, of departments here within the city that deal with the billing, collection, following of, of uh, water. So that my question was just to make sure that somebody's following it up on that. It is being followed on a daily basis, no question on a that. A bill that goes unpaid for, for over a year gets leaned onto their taxes. I understand, but this is, right. the, the, no, my question the, is we don't, as a resident, not just as a counselor, we don't want it to get to that point. Right. I and think we have outstanding monies. If if we have a computer system or a program that tells somebody in one of the offices, does. the you know these are our outstanding bills. You know maybe we could make a phone call, get somebody to their door, like the gas company or the electric company does, and get payment from the residents. We we are doing that since we've had the new meters. Uh, we've been able to do that without any problem, so it would never get to the end of a year at this point. Okay, very good to hear. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Any other questions? Seeing none, I want to thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. I want to you. thank you. Just a point of information for you. Any, any information that you need for us could either come to myself or to the superintendent. Address that way so we know exactly where it's coming in. Thank you, Mr. Jordan. Thank you. Very thank you. you. Councilors, I want to thank you again. Uh, this is uh, the end of uh, the second night. We will uh, hopefully conclude tomorrow night, the third night. We do have a fourth scheduled if need be, but it looks like we're on track to conclude tomorrow night. Tomorrow night we will start at 6.30 here in the chamber. Again, thank you and have a good evening.